Hello and welcome to the What If Machine, the brand new science fueled gaming show where we investigate just how close the wonder of modern science fact can bring us to gaming science fiction. So let's start off with arguably the most beloved sci-fi game series of all time. Portal is bursting with science. There's gravity, lasers, robots, advanced AI, even accurate blue-orange goo physics. The piece de resistance, however, is without doubt the portal gun itself, or Aperture Science Portable Quantum Tunneling Device, to give it its full title. This gives protagonist Chell the power to create two linked portals through which general objects, lasers, even herself can pass in a bid to solve puzzles for the malevolent AI in charge. So, how does it work? Well, in the game Fiction, the gun harnesses quantum tunneling. Now, this is a real quantum phenomenon in which particles at tiny scales can pass through, that is, quantum tunnel through physical objects. Aperture Science appear to have scaled up the effect for human-sized tunneling and added in a dose of teleportation to boot. So, what if we could drag this design kicking and screaming into the real world? Would it work? Well, we spoke to Chris Doran, research scientist and co-founder of Geomerics, the company behind Battlefield 3's lighting engine, to find out. Portal's been one of my favourite games, and Portal 2 just played from start to finish. Now I'm going replaying it with my eight-year-old son and teaching him bits of physics from it. Uh, and there, there are lots of reasons why you, you can see there are going to be issues with the Portal gun. Perhaps one of the best examples is from this sort of very simple gameplay mechanic you get where you fire a, a hole in a wall low down and then you fire a, your second portal higher up and you go in and you come up higher up and you've gained energy because as you fall down you've gained kinetic energy. That means that the, the gun immediately violates one of the most fundamental laws of thermodynamics which is conservation of energy. You, you can't create energy out of, out of nothing. Now this is not the only run-in the device has with the laws of the universe. Valve's puzzle solving wonder even sticks the middle finger to Einstein's very own baby you're breaking laws of special relativity if you can just uh, immediately disappear at one point and appear at another point because that means you're, you're travelling on a trajectory that's going faster than the speed of light. You could get somewhere before light can get there and that leads to all sorts of paradoxes that you can go and do something and sort of shine a light and receive it before it's got there and it, it, it leads you into these sort of areas where actually time travel itself becomes possible. Also, if by some mechanism the portal gun was possible, Chris reckons that we would already know about it. How? Well, aliens, of course. Confused? Let's hear him out. Pretty much all physicists would state, would say that there, that there is bound to be life in other parts of the universe, and almost certainly life that's more, more intelligent than that, so that has solved more technical problems than we have. If they had ever made a portal gun, they would have populated the entire universe. Because you know, if you had that capability to just immediately fly to one planet to the next, you'd very quickly piggyback your way, fill out a, a galaxy, and then go on from there. For me, I think whatever the portal gun might lack in actual scientific credibility, it more than makes up for in fictional awesomeness. Next up, let's explore everyone's favourite test-obsessed artificial intelligence, GLaDOS. We both said a lot of things that you're going to regret. Now I say favourite, she's actually phenomenally evil. She hates you, wants you to test for all eternity, and even has the gall to lie about reuniting you with your parents, and worse, reuniting you with cake. So, just how close are we to creating AI comparable, or perhaps even smarter, than our squishy biological brains? Well, we caught up with Noel Sharkey, Professor of Artificial Intelligence and Robotics at Sheffield University, to find out. And more importantly, ask if it's time to panic and start pouring water on all of our electronic devices in a wise preemptive strike. I probably shouldn't have done that. Will there ever be a true artificial intelligence that can have emotions, for instance? I can't see it at all myself. But what I can say is the progress of artificial intelligence, the whole process, everybody talks, it's always 25 years, but it's a moving window, it's always 25 years. And I don't know if there ever will be real AI one day, but I suspect strongly that nobody who's living on this planet at the moment will be alive when it happens. Okay, so according to Noel, GLaDOS sounds like a bit of a no-hoper, in our lifetime at least. But what about programming an AI to give the illusion of emotion and intelligence? 
I've got a robot in the Millennium Gallery in Birmingham that does all the human expressions, happy, sad, you know, disgusted, and it really makes people think, oh, there's something in there, but there's nothing in there. So you could make something that could fool you into thinking it was evil, fool you into thinking it was happy, but will it feel anything? I can't see that happening myself. And I'm, I'm here to be proved wrong, I'm a scientist. Right, so that's the future covered, but what's the most impressive AI on the planet today? Noel told us about Watson, an artificial intelligence computer system with a massive database capable of taking in verbal questions and responding incredibly quickly. I would say at the moment the most sophisticated piece of artificial intelligence is Watson at One in Jeopardy. It's one incredible piece of kit, just being able to do that, to go on a TV programme and to be given the answers, that's the idea of Jeopardy, they give you the answers to a question and you've got to try and guess what the question was. And where it showed itself up is when it went wrong, it went really, really wrong. You could tell immediately it wasn't a human. Watson is brilliant, but it doesn't have general intelligence. You can tell that because it doesn't care if it wins or loses. It doesn't even notice if there's other players present. It knows nothing about the world. So a robot who doesn't really understand what's going on, huh? Now that reminds me a little of a certain Portal character. Wheatley is in many ways Portal 2's comic relief. Incredibly well written and voiced, he can be charmingly funny. And it's not out of the question that you might have a very minor case of serious brain damage. But don't be alarmed, all right? Uh, although if you do, if you do feel alarmed, try to hold on to that feeling because that is the proper reaction to being told that you've got brain damage. So naturally, we thought we'd ask Noel: Could a robot ever really crack a joke? I mean, if you think about what our comedians do, a lot of the good comedians have script writers. A lot of the good ones write their own script, but you're working from a script. But I could certainly imagine, imagine one being very, very funny. It's just a matter of getting the phrasing right, the timing right. Uh, you can do this kind of training, you can wire it up and have a comedian come in and, and have them emulate a comedian. So sure, yeah, it would be brilliant. Okay, so GLaDOS level AI might be a bit of a no-hoper for the foreseeable future, but if someone could build a replica Wheatley and program in some jokes, well, I don't know about you, but I'd pay good gold to get my hands on one of those. And speaking of having robots from Portal in your own home, take a look at this. Created by an advanced mechatronics student at Penn State University, this replica Portal turret responds to movement and can target with alarming accuracy. Fortunately, it's only equipped with a Nerf arsenal, but swap that for a couple of M16s and you've got an adorable yet deadly solution for all your home security needs. So that's the science of Portal in a nutshell. And while some elements are beyond the reaches of modern scientific understanding, there is a spark of science fact at the heart of its ingenious, hilarious science fiction. And we love it for that. It's just so much more rewarding than a fiction which is inconsistent or strays into it works by magic territory. But what are your thoughts on Portal and the science within? Does it bother you when sci-fi breaks fundamental laws, or could you not care less so long as it's entertaining? Drop us a comment or a message on the social things on screen now, and don't forget to tweet me at CampFrazRob with the hashtag WhatIfMachine. See you next time.